Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video on the channel. This is kind of a weird setup because the Vaders are currently out of the car. I don't have an extra set of Vaders just laying around. This is the uh, the set for today's video. Not really, because we will be working in the car. Um, but I do want to make this video a little bit more DIY style. Um, all right, I got to pause right here because this actually ended up being a completely different issue. We are addressing the trunk harness. So if you came here for a DIY, you'll basically see me tearing apart the trunk and basically getting to the point where you would cut the harness and be ready to install it. I don't record installing the harness or putting anything back together. You'll see later in the video why that is. Um, but that's just a quick note just in case you came here to strictly see a trunk harness video. Um, that is not that but we do have a whole different issue on our hands, which we will address. Because there are not a lot of um, basically DIY or any in-depth videos for the E36 trunk harness. Now, I am replacing the trunk harness because the central locking mechanism is not all working at the same time. It keeps blowing a fuse um, and it just keeps popping that fuse. It works for a little bit and then there must be a short somewhere, so it pops the fuse. So that has led me to believe that maybe it's got something to do with the trunk harness. That is my first idea. So that's where I'm going to start. Now look, if you guys have watched any of my videos prior, uh, you would know that I am not the number one guy to wire anything. I've basically done everything under the sun for wiring um, in like the most ghetto way. Um, so this will be the first time I use a soldering iron on anything. Um, and obviously I just, I couldn't not use a soldering iron on something like this. Especially if you guys have this issue, you'll know why. All right, so check it out. You can pick this guy up for a hundred bucks from FCP or anywhere that sells a harness. Um, they're around a hundred bucks. Here's why I suggest that you get the whole thing. So if you can see here, we have about 10 or 15 um, wires, probably about 10, that need to be soldered. Um, and what you'll notice is if your trunk harness, um, if you've noticed something goes wrong because the trunk harness deals with some lighting, some locks, um, and a couple other things, power features, um, and the E36. So you can peel back the insulation in your trunk harness and you can kind of just troubleshoot, find out which wire is broken, which one looks pretty bad. Um, but if you think about it, after 25 years, these cars are all like at least 20 years old now. So um, it's probably smart to just replace the whole thing. If you can spare the hundred bucks, I think that'll give you the peace of mind to know that you've gone through the trunk harness completely, at least this part of the rear wiring for the car. Um, and again, it's a hundred bucks, but at the same time, it's a hundred bucks well spent. And this is before I've even installed it. I'm just saying that to say that, yes, you can obviously peel back the insulation, find out what wire is bad, repair that wire. But realistically, what are the chances that in a few months you have another wire that's brittle and broken because you know the way these things are routed they just get slammed in the trunk um, and stuff breaks and to preface this video i have not actually looked at my trunk yet i don't know what the deal is i don't know the harness could look completely fine i'm going to replace it anyways because i ordered the piece and it is a good um learning experience to use a soldering iron because normally i just do janky electrical tape twisted things together or use a little twist ties or you know whatever and then also it is provided with heat shrink, so you're basically, I mean, at this point, you might as well just do it right. So if you're going to buy the harness, buy a soldering iron if you don't have one. This is coming from a guy that's never used one, um, but you can pick them up for like 30 bucks on Amazon, so why not? See that fucker? God damn it. That's like a would-be. That's not one to play with. All right, now look. As you can see, this is no slouch of a harness. It is a very long harness with a lot of connections here, 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 here. It's a little bit overwhelming, especially when there's no step-by-step -step guide, at least that I was able to find, but we're gonna get through it. And the easiest thing about this, or the easiest way to do this is just take your time, take photos along the way before you cut everything up. And, uh, so if everything else fails, you can hook everything back up the way it was. All right, now you can see here, it starts here and it actually goes in to the car. But if you follow it, it runs around right here. You can see it in this little bracket. Now, one of the biggest reasons is when you close your trunk, it'll pinch that. And uh, that is where wires fray, break over time, corrode, brittle, everything. They just break over time. 
and it's uh it's obviously no surprise that they would break because this is a horrible spot but i mean look at that look at this little kink right there just that alone there might be something broken down here i have no idea you see it routes up here but the first first order of business is actually pull back this tail light cover super easy if you don't have one So this is easy, you just twist that little shebang and it's on there and you twist it and you pull it off. You now and as a precaution, I would recommend unplugging your battery before you get into this. Um, just a good precaution. You'd rather just have the battery not connected while you deal with all this. So anyways, pulling the trunk carpet out is really simple, um, especially with mine because it comes out so often that it's actually not tucked in or anything. But what you want to do first, if it's tucked in, you just want to pull the uh, the bottom piece out first, and then you can get to this guy and pull it straight out. There's no clips, there's no pins. It literally just pulls straight out. But if you haven't messed with your trunk carpet or your uh, trunk carpet before, it's going to be uh, tucked in a little tighter. This one's just kind of sitting freely. So yeah, first thing, get the bottom piece out, then pull the side back out, and you will be able to see where the harness goes to from the trunk. All right, now after you've pulled your uh, carpet back, you actually have access. You can kind of look at where the harness goes. And actually, if you follow the new harness, you'll see kind of how this whole thing is set up in the car. Um, and you can kind of just follow it. This guy, super easy, just pull it straight out. And then I think what I'm gonna do, because this is my first rodeo with this exact procedure, I'm gonna actually scale up the trunk and then pull this guy out. And then I'm gonna pull the, uh, the trunk liner out probably because I don't know how else I would be able to access all the stuff from the inside. But I think that's what I'm gonna start out with first. It seems the most accessible. Again, please take everything I do with a grain of salt because this is my first time doing this exact project. As you can see, I just took one of these little interior clips to pull that piece out. These rubber grommets are super easy. They can just be pulled out with your fingers or with a pry. All right, now you can ask anybody how to get these clips out. Everybody has their own method, but I will tell you what I have found the most um, efficient and best way to get these out without damaging them. A pick just like this and one of these prize tool, pry tools with the metal with the little hook piece so you can actually slide under it are actually gonna be your best friend for this because these guys are pretty delicate. I mean, you don't wanna go and have to replace them with non-OEM clips, so just take your time with them. Um, just pry underneath it enough to get the teeth in there and then you can evenly pry it out and you won't have to deal with warping it or you know, pulling these guys apart because again, you just don't wanna put like weird clips in it if you can save the OEM ones. Uh, I just put them in a little Harbor Freight bowl. Get one of these at Harbor Freight every time you go. They're like a dollar. And if you go enough times, you'll have an arsenal of Harbor Freight magnetic bowls. So I will actually be removing all of these next. I don't really know if it's just the clips I'm gonna need, but I will find out in due time. So I will keep you posted and let you know. I'm not gonna film this again. You're just gonna have to work on these clips. They're not that hard once you get them. All right, now, as you can see, all of the clips have been removed. There's actually two screws, one here and one here. They got plastic little caps. I actually dropped them in the spare tire well, so I gotta fish those out. And then obviously, this guy untwists. And this little strap, you can kind of just angle it out from the trunk. But now, this whole piece is out. So you can set this aside. As you can see, you follow the harness up goes up through here. Um, obviously it snakes through that little passage, goes in through here, it comes out right here. Now, it's gonna be a little tedious to get all of this unplugged. We'll deal with that in a little bit, but now you have access to it. It's gonna be way easier for you to pull this whole trunk off, but realistically, if you wanna keep it on the car, you wanna keep the body line or the trunk line straight and you don't wanna have to mess with it when you put it back on, you can do it like this. I just don't have really anywhere to prop the trunk up if I do take it off the car. But believe me, it's 100% easier. Um, again, this is all kind of just happening as I'm doing it. So I'm not sure what the best procedure would be on all of this. But all I know is start getting stuff loose. All right, my next piece of advice for you guys, if you are doing this, go ahead, take your hand, feel the harness, feel 
kind of all the stuff that comes off of the main harness. See, there's this wire here. This actually goes straight to this guy. So what I'm gonna do is unscrew this so I can unclip it and then I'll screw this guy back in. Again, just make sure you're, you're taking pictures of things. If you know, you're not gonna remember where everything goes. A lot of this stuff is pretty plug and play um, and the clip will only fit to one uh, thing on the trunk. But at the same time, you just wanna make sure. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be extra cautious, take extra photos and just be very diligent about that because that's the last thing I wanna do. Again, there's not very many resources for this online, so I'd rather just get it all documented and uh, maybe I'll do a write-up for it as well because clearly nobody wants to. Uh, I've now detached this little guy. There's a little um, crimp that kind of sits on that piece there. So I'll set this aside for now, but here's what I did after that. So you can take this little trim panel off. The lock goes right here and the two license plate uh, bulbs are right there. There's four Phillips. You can see the little indentations where the screws were at. So right here, you pull these guys out. They literally just pull straight out, um, or you kind of have to angle them. You can see there, there is, you'll feel it, but there's a little bracket here. So you put one end in first, and that's how you change your bulbs typically. Um, but this is where you can unplug it because when you're trying to get to the main harness, it snakes. Also, this guy, you can feel it. It's right above the little bit of metal. You'll feel right where it clips in. This one, I wouldn't even bother taking a photo with this. Do it if you want, but again, a lot of this stuff will, male to female, will only fit in one spot. So there's not like a bunch of possibilities to mess up. All right, I hope I didn't lose you guys because I've done a little bit here. As you can see, there's uh, two harnesses here. This guy up here is super easy. This one is gonna take a lot, a lot, a lot of pulling. So just keep that in mind. Um, that's why I took this thing all the way out. As you can see, this is for the actual latch. So this little blue piece, if you can pop it on there, it would normally sit right here. It sits just like that. And it should be with the bolt holes, whatever, whichever way they were. And it sits up there in the trunk. So you wanna unscrew this guy. And if you can feed yourself enough room with the harness, you can actually pull this guy out, angle it off. You can dislocate it over here too, but I feel like it's easier just doing it like that. Anyways, this harness is completely detached from this part of the trunk, so now we can pull it down. All right, so there is a lot that you actually have to pay attention to here. Pull this out. I finally get this out. You need to cut right about here. You gotta knock the little push pins out. You take a pick, and whenever there's a push pin, you won't be able to see this. Anyways. Whenever the, you'll see the push pins here, you just put a uh, pick in the center and you just tap it out with a hammer. You're gonna lose the piece in there, so hopefully it's not gonna rattle around. I'm gonna order new rivets for this because I don't want to have missing ones. Now that I had to tap that out, ideally you really only just need to tap that one out, but now you have it enough because it sits down and you'll see it when you do it. It sits down, there's like a little hump and it sits kind of below it. So clearly this is the main harness that goes to the trunk. So you can cut it probably right about here and get to work. All right, so I will be picking up the camera tomorrow. We will be installing this tomorrow um, when I have a little bit more time. It may take the next couple days because I won't have that much time after work tomorrow, but I do know now what to do. So once, this is the new harness obviously. So before you cut your old harness, or I guess cut it out, but what you need to do is make sure um, you get your connections and you figure out what wires you actually need to solder because this harness comes with a lot more um, Connections than what your car is probably going to be wired up for So realistically just find out what was connected before for instance There is a believe 17 leads here and I only need 10 because that's how many is currently wired into my OEM harness right now so basically go to each connection you realize that you need these, which are for your license plate. So that is one, two, three, four wires there. You got this guy for that little sensor, whatever that is for the latch. Um, and that is five. So there you go. There's five immediately just with that little sensor. And then these two for the plates or for the bulbs. So you have five there. And then the other five, the remaining five will actually be um, right here. So then what you need to do is as you can see, because this is what you're connecting, as you can see there's like an extra lead, or there's an extra 
plug in for something there. And then, uh, where's the other one? There's another one down here and I don't have that connected either. So that is like an additional, let's see, there's like three or four in there and there's like two there. So yeah, it'll, that way you can separate it. Hopefully this is making sense, but if you can tell you need these and these, that's what you need to be hooked up. This stuff that's attached to the harness is like optional. I don't know what that's for, but that's not what's connected to my harness. So I'm only gonna replace what needs to be replaced. Anyways, take a picture of these, of the wires, uh, label them on your photo or whatever. So then when you come to this side of the harness, you can narrow it down to the actual 10 you need to solder and then you can just tape the other ones off. But just make sure that you're, um, you're, you're making sure you got the right one selected to solder because when you put it up to your harness, you know, you got 17 on one and 10 on the other. It's not gonna make sense unless you kind of just do all this work and figure out which ones you need. I'll be picking up the camera tomorrow. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. Any, like, I don't know, because what we're doing now is So we're you testing. just, we're just, you know, we're testing this uh, with a ohm meter. We're checking, what we did is we checked on continuity. Oh, it says it's, it has continuity, but then when you check it for resistance, it has an incredible amount of resistance, which is popping the fuse. Exactly, so that's. So this is gonna be our problem right here. So I'll the get back. insulation is burned. It's kinked, and if you actually pull on this, the insulation stretches because mm -hmm. the wire inside is broken. And if there's any resistance, correct, that can just pop that fuse over and over and over again. Over and over, yeah. So I'll get back to you guys, but this is a really good find. Thank you very much, Scott, for helping me for sure. figure all this yep. out. All right, so I know the lighting is actually atrocious. Scott just left. He helped, like, tremendously. Um, he knows his way around all this stuff, which is great. And it was super awesome that he uh, taught me how to solder. Scott is Cole's dad. Um, he gave me a job too at some point, so that was awesome. So he's always been very helpful, but in a time like this, I would be 100% completely lost without his help. And unfortunately, we've kind of come to the conclusion that it maybe wasn't the trunk harness. We checked resistance in all of the wires, at least in that loom that went from kind of where the trunk harness hooks up to the actuator, um, basically to where it runs into the main harness for the rear of the car. And there was no resistance in any of those wires, even though some of them looked kind of fucked up. Um, it didn't really matter because there was no resistance in there. So the next plan of attack will be to actually, I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna tin all of the wires and have them cut and ready um, and stripped, whatever, get them tinned and then, um, we can get those soldered probably tomorrow. And then once that thing is all plugged in and that harness is kind of all bundled back up, the next step is maybe to uh, test the actual actuator because it could possibly be an actuator drawing power. Um, and that's why fuse, because fuse number seven keeps popping and that is one of the biggest issues. And when you look on the fuse box cover, it says like, project projective protection but um scott believes and i believe that it is a typo i think it's protective um it's like a protective measure and that would make sense because it will blow the fuse it's a small fuse too so it'll blow the fuse to protect it from killing the battery i guess or draining the thing because it's it continues to draw power so it buzzes or it'll, it'll just continue to draw power to wherever it's drawing power from. So I guess we, in this instance, you lock the car, all the doors are locked, you unlock the car, and when it sends that signal and it stays on, um, that signal stays on. So instead of it just like, fuck, I don't know, I'm having a brain fart right now. But what I'm trying to say is it is not the trunk harness is what we've come down to. The conclusion is that it is not the trunk harness. Yes, we're still getting a new trunk harness, which is nice. Um, I know I didn't really film much of that, but I haven't really done much aside from we cut the harness from the trunk. And instead of repinning the little con connection, we actually just soldered it because I didn't have any repinning tools or so any tools that would actually get in there and 
make me able to uh, remove that pin and repin it. So now that I can solder, I can actually uh, get that harness set up. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm super fucking tired, but I wanna get this uh, kinda squared away. So next time I get help again, uh, we can kinda hit the ground running and I'll have some shit together. I just can't sit around and be lazy about this because this is a huge issue and I really want it dealt with so I can get back to installing other stuff. Um, especially with electrical stuff, it's so out of my element. But this is why I love this stuff at the same time as frustrating as it is. Oh god, the lighting is so bad. But at the same time, this is stuff I would have never learned unless something like this happens. This is why I love this car and why I won't be getting rid of it anytime soon. It's a bitch to work on and I'm forever thankful for all the people that helped me out because if I didn't have help, I just couldn't do this realistically. There's just so much to learn. It, it's not something you can really just dip your toes into. You kind of just have to jump in, especially with a car like this. If I had an E92 M3 or just any newer car like my 340, it's just, it's not gonna get to this point for a long time. So that's why cars like this are much harder to keep on the road. And that is what I'm learning. So anyways, I will catch up with you guys when I next find out. I almost wanna just make this a part one to the wiring harness saga, is what I will call it, or the electrical gremlin saga. So I think that's what I'll do. So uh, yeah. All right, if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know it was kind of a mess. I know I didn't film a crazy amount. Um, but yeah, this is the trunk harness saga. This is developed into something that is more than just a trunk harness. So this will be part one. You guys will see part two and maybe part three and part four and so on. This will be a series until we find out what the electrical gremlin is coming from. Could be an actuator, could be some wire within the cabin or the engine bay or the trunk. Um, it could be something as simple as a battery. I have no idea, we don't know yet, but that is something you will find out in the future, and I will find out in the future. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to uh, stay tuned for the next one. See you in the next one. Peace.